Welcome to the Brothers and Sisters podcast. This is what's coming up next, so stay tuned. I think, to me, the young need to be targeted. You know, one of the biggest disagreements I have with, with some of the young folks now is you can't just resist just to resist. You need to target your anger and find whatever it is that you want to make better and make it better. Don't just say it's wrong and then just sit on the sideline. You want to know why shit doesn't happen? Well, that's why it doesn't happen. Because you say, okay, this is the problem, but then you're not willing to put the work in. You expect someone else to do the work for you. M- Megan Kelly, who the grill uh, said was on Negro Patrol, which I, which makes me laugh every time, uh, recently went after Naomi Osaka for uh, not wanting to answer questions. Uh, this was after going after Nicole Hannah-Jones for... Uh, pushed back on the 1619 project. Both of them kind of sort of shut her down with Naomi Osaka telling her that all of the, uh, she was, Megan Kelly was criticizing her for cover shoots, fashion shoots and stuff like that. Naomi Osaka was like, I did this like over a year ago. Like, yeah. you know, what's your issue? And she should and know told- better. She works in media. If you work right? in media, you should know that no one poses for a magazine cover and then it's released a month later like right especially not the extent of like sports illustrated swimsuit issues that like come on. exactly Before and we then, start with her I, go ahead. I i think that like megan kelly then this whole thing with naomi osaka i think it's just like a bigger i mean megan kelly is who she is so let's just leave her over there just her <laughs> personhood is right there but she's representative of a crop of white folks who hate the idea that black and brown people, especially young black and brown people are recognizing their worth. Yeah, and exactly. the same thing happened in the NCAA, which is why they're about to pay folks because yeah. you can't tell people that they're not professionals one minute, but then lock them in a hotel room and tell them not to go nowhere. Just, you know, but, right. but you're still an amateur. So it's like, that's what's happening largely what's going on in the NFL, NBA, and now with Naomi Osaka is like people ca- came to see her. <laughs> and yeah. then you told her, you must answer questions. She was like, okay, I'll get fine, whatever. Then they wanted to get more buck. And she said, well, screw it, I'm leaving. Well, yeah. who's the one looking stupid? Yeah. So the fact is you have black and brown people. I mean, you have like rappers, like Big Sean took a year off to deal with his mental health. Like you're starting to get a crop of young black folks and brown folks who are saying, screw you, you use me and I'm not going to be used up. And that yeah. makes people like Megan Kelly and old white folks angry because it's like, how dare you? How dare you not fall in line? How dare yeah. you not fall in line? Yeah, it's and always been like- uh, Everything we've been talking oh. about, going back to work. But yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead, Sean. No, I'm just quick. It's always been like a, a fuck your feeling vibe when they're in relation to black people. You know what I mean? Just do what you're here for, what, you know, <laughs> what we expect from you. And your humanity is like putting on the back burner. I mean, it's essentially shut up and dribble. I mean, it's yeah. the same concept. Right. You to say, as yeah. you're told, and we don't want to hear anything from you. Just entertain us. Exactly. Yeah. For them, we're just bodies. Mm-hmm. We're just- here to do what they want us to do and whatever else we need to work out do it on our own time yeah there's there's also a group of people i'm sorry to interrupt but this is also Uh a group of people come on like fox news megan kelly like (laughs) what are they talking about mental health they can't even tell people to get the vaccine so (laughs) everything is based on like you're weak we're strong america and it's like every part that isn't that means you're lazy you're this you're that anytime somebody looks out for their own self there's always this like and i mean especially black and brown people but anytime you anybody talks about mental health it's like ah oh, pussies and you're yeah. like and, yeah. but the problem is people have stopped caring because <laughs> now it's like okay you can call me whatever you need to i still get a check nike yeah. immediately was like we got her yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The same thing happened with Shikari Richardson. I think I kind of sort of echoing what you all are saying. There's a long history of this, right? 
Right, slave, that's what slavery was about. And then everything immediately we stopped working, ever since we stopped working for free. I mean, that's what it, immediately it, afterwards, yeah, it was about, you know, rich black codes restricting black autonomy, right? Literally like controlling black movement. And so this is the 21st century of that. And like like CC was saying, like Autumn was saying, like Sean was saying, now it's like, you know, people are like, fuck it. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I'm st I'm still going to be profitable. I'm still going to do what it is that I'm going to do. And there's yep. nothing you can do to stop it. And I think that's what's upsetting them. Like yep. the fact that, cause she even talked about that. She's like, oh, like people saying I'm a bully. How am I bullying the most highly, the highest paid uh, female athlete in the world or whatever? The fact that 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 here. I did not know that. Look at her as human, like. Yeah. Like and, the Megyn Kelly shit, like, oh, you signed up for the, the, the yeah. monarchy and like, and <laughs> like, she said, like, all this stuff that she's doing is like, so she could buy her mom a house. Like, we don't know what type of fame Naomi Osaka anticipated having. <laughs> she's gonna blow up like this and she's not ready. And she's a kid, she's young. They, like, they feel like if you're black and you somehow elevated in, in success wise or status wise. That should be payment enough. Shut yeah. the fuck up and do, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you're lucky you you're not- You made too much money to have mental health issues. Yeah, Bingo. you're lucky you're yeah. not one of the other Bingo ones. Go that part. Right. <laughs> yeah, be grateful, shut up. Be grateful we let you do this. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I wrote about that. I, I always take Sean's line for that. I literally wrote about that. It's like, you you know, you should be grateful. You could be swinging from that tree over there. You're yeah. not, I so- like, Yeah, you're not, so be good. <laughs> She went after Nicole Hannah-Jones also in the 1619 Project specifically. Nicole Hannah-Jones responded with, I'm glad you stopped pretending to be a journalist. <laughs> Megan Kelly, no, she got her twice. Megan <laughs> Kelly then responded with, oh, you were panned by, you know, historians to the left and right for your inaccuracies. Nicole Hannah-Jones then responded, I, you're right. I should continue to do hard. I should do hard hitting pieces like Santa Claus is white, and then that just ended. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there's a <laughs> how flippant was she when she said that? He's white. He just said, "Yeah, that was just hard." Sorry, if any kids are listening, but how can I imagine? Sorry, that? he's white. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as people who get upset about like any type of fictional character that's not the race sure. they expect them. Sure. Like, and the genders, because now we have issues with Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Yeah, so, I saw I mean, that too. Race, gender, of fictional things that don't exist. Like, right. really, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head? Like, come on. They're, How could you not do that? Don't have How could you not have eyes. Wait for them to that. <laughs> figure out that the Smurfs had no parents. I mean, it's not going to be I mean, how hard is that? <laughs> um, yeah, but she's got particularly her, and actually, we kind of sort of see it on the proto left. And I'd be interested to hear what you guys are saying. Bill Maher is actually doing a lot of this now, also, kind of sort of poking at um, how can I put this? Oh, no. Looking at racial issues, mm -hmm. he's flipping too. He, he annoys me in that way too. He she he had her on. They were key yeah. keying together, like oh, they, everybody yeah. to chill the fuck out. Like it's yeah. ridiculous. like that was their whole conversation. Because that's yeah. what I mean. I'm, this is probably not going to sound extremely intelligent, but they're jerks. <laughs> jerks, <laughs> like, jerks don't want to stop, and when jerks get together, you know. They're just like, oh, what's the big deal? Like, okay, here's fine. The big deal. Here, 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 here's the big swing, right? <laughs> the problem is, if it makes them uncomfortable, they don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, because they're fragile. Everything. They like to talk about everyone else's fragility, but it's like, no, you're really fragile. Everybody, no. somebody says something that you don't like, you can't take it. That's it. But you make a living out of criticizing everyone. So right, only only people. white people are deserving of empathy in times like when they're dealing with yeah. mental health and shit. And yeah, I mean, Donald last Trump, time I Donald Trump treated so unfairly. <laughs> <laughs> but the opioid crisis. What about yeah. the crisis thirty years ago? Yeah, so right. Different, right. Which many of us grew up 
<laughs> and we were children during that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And with no social, no no programs to to help no us out. I, we, that's right, we had just say no one there. We had I just got no one there. here. All you Baltimore folks. I grew up in Detroit, so I know a little bit about. There I think know. we have something in common. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Can we ignore the profit motive in all of this though? Right, this stuff sells. There's a there's a reason why it's happening, and there's another point, and I like to get you guys' opinion. There's a there's a cadre of black academics slash what I call blacklists that are kind of sort of co-signing on this uh -huh. that are giving it, you know, legs, namely John McWhorter, Glenn Laurie, Kamel Foster. So is this like, you know, you blacks need to just take what you're given? And like, yeah, it's, you know, it's better than it was. I think that's another key point also. We've gotten better, so it's what it is. There's money to be made here. Like, people are getting shows. People are selling books, right? It's a, it's another kind of sort of profiting off of Black pain. It's a, it's is this capitalism? Is it racism? Is it both? Both, I would think so. Combination of all of it. Yeah, combination of both. The answer is... D or C. I mean, it's all of the above. Yeah. Because yeah. there's money to be made in harassing and upsetting Black women. Yeah. It's like a thing. It's... <laughs> it's definitely a thing. And that's our next that's segment, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not just people who are not Black who are doing it. We even have our own. <laughs> yeah, we internalize a lot of that stuff. I mean, a lot of it is internalized oppression. Right. And a lot of older... I mean, I can speak from my own family where it's like it's better than it used to be so yeah. shut up and take the scraps off the table and pretend it's a meal and right. a lot yeah. of us our age are saying no yeah and particularly those of us i mean i'm dating myself i'll be 40 very soon Ooh. um the yeah. young the younger kids the the youngins aren't having it at they are all. not and i love it yeah they're, they're not having it and they're not having it and i love it so so i, I think to me the young need to be targeted. You know, one of the biggest disagreements I have with, with some of the young folks now is you can't just resist just to resist. You need to target your anger and find whatever it is that you want to make better and make it better. Don't just say it's wrong and then they sit on the sideline. You want to know why shit doesn't happen? Well, that's why it doesn't happen. Because you say, okay, this is the problem, but then you're not willing to put the work in. You expect someone else to do the work for you. So and that's all. Go ahead. That's, you know, and that's my issue. You know, that's great. a whole other can of worms, right? Because they don't believe in the system as is to, right. to, uh, to as a means to achieve things. <laughs> what do you think about that? Would I wish we had somebody in DC advocating for causes <laughs> to talk about? Oh, hey, what do you think about that? The youngins don't seem to really believe in the way things as they are, Miss Thomas. Like, what would you tell them? Well, <laughs> part of that, it, well, I have to look at both sides because as much as I admire them, you know, I am 38 and I have been working in this field my entire career pretty much. So I would say that there's stuff to be learned from the old school, but you don't just burn it down. And I think that's yeah. the problem with fo that folks have with some of the younger uh, Democratic members yep. um, is you know, it's kind of like being a freshman in college and then being like, this, how are we about to do this? And the seniors are like, whoa, whoa, calm down. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you're wrong. <laughs> and right. we can make changes, but at least see how things are done first. And then be like, I think we can, we can switch this out. But the problem that we tend to have is just to throw up your hands and say, fuck it. And then yep. who else is voting? <laughs> who else is like, because certain people are not going to throw up their hands and say, screw it. Like, yeah. and they're the same people who vote day in, day out, and are making the laws so that you can't. So the fact is, I would say, learn a little bit about how the system has worked. And please, you're not going to get arguments from me saying that we don't have some archaic stuff. Looking at you, Senate. But like, mm -hmm. 
I, I do think that there's something to be said about actually knowing about something before you then try and burn it down or and or change. Right. Weren't we just applauding Naomi and Saka? Cece, you pointed out Big Sean for kind of sort of going their own paths. And we'll, cl- I mean, we'll close out on this. Um, is there war- is there justification? Is there a warning of being like, hey, we don't do the things? Because I'm sure Naomi Osaka, I'm sure Big Sean had people who were like, this isn't the way things are done. This is how you want to do it. And they are saying no. Like, I'm doing it a different way. I'm doing it my own way. Excuse my language. Fuck whatever the system is it, and how it's set up. And- but I, I don't see it that way, right? It, it, those are two very indi- individualistic things. Um, playing tennis is is an individual sport. Uh, it, it, it's not where you're or being a, a hip hop star is not. You, you're not required to work with other people. You're not. You're an island by yourself, and 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 you have you. They got sponsors here. though, right? They got sponsors. They got people it's, that it's you know. You so. Sponsors say I'm sick. I need you know. I need to take a mental break. Is different. Conversely. LeBron James ain't taking this, ain't taking six, ain't, ain't taking six weeks off during the season. Tom yeah. Brady ain't taking six weeks off during the season to, to settle their mental health issues, right? Yeah. And it's not that I don't think that it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't take, she didn't take the match off. It was the questions after, right? It wasn't right. the actual she didn't yeah. get off actually doing her job. So I think there's a couple things like kind of to bounce off what Walter was saying. I think one, in the vein of what I was saying, Classy, about. Um, about actually learning about the system before you mm-hmm. go in and change it. Mm-hmm. Naomi Osaka, we, we didn't know who the hell she was, wasn't like not talking to the media. We're like five, six years in and she's number one in the world. So it, mm-hmm. it's not like Marshawn Lynch didn't just come out randomly in his rookie year. It's like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. We already know who he was. He was mm-hmm. Beast Mode. Like we yeah. didn't even say his name. His name was Beast Mode. Like, mm-hmm. When the Milwaukee Bucks said we're not we're forfeiting this game after you know another murder, they're the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> so it's like right. now they are champions, but like at the time they were still Milwaukee Bucks with Giannis. So it's mm-hmm. not like these are random people who just show up. It wasn't some guy on the bench who's like, I'm not talking to the media. Well, we don't care about you. Right. But the thing is, like, that's also about learning the system. These people didn't just jump in and say, I'm about to shake shit up. Naomi's the number one player in the world. <laughs> or mm-hmm. top five right. mm-hmm. about to play in the olympics she didn't just show up she learned what she what doesn't work for her and she said screw this but again she had to play the game a little bit first and now she's saying i but i sell the tickets i make the rules marshawn lynch has more than enough money to give you for his fines <laughs> Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's about learning what you can do. Now you are in a place where you can affect change. Now mm-hmm. they're talking about changing the rules and tennis. Yeah. Yeah. About like talking to the media. And now we're wondering, are these post game like interviews that interesting? <laughs> but but Naomi's argument wasn't about not doing the interviews. Her problem was they're asking her questions not about tennis. That is true. That yeah. Was the problem. Right. We've had and to understand that it. until now. But see, the other part of that, you know, the hardest part is, and I'm, I'm going to play a little bit of devil advocate here because obviously I'm, I'm riding with Naomi on this one, but she invited a lot of the questions, right? Her persona, her, she used her star power to highlight social injustice, right? And if you're going to use your, your public persona to do that, when you ask questions about it, I don't know that you should be able to run away from it. That's fair. That's What's fair. Going away? So she always I, wore. She would always wear, yeah. wear her Black Lives Matter, or she would wear um say her name, say his name, whatever it was. She would always sport it, and someone and when she would get asked about it, while I understand it's not on a narrow scope of tennis, it's still something that you're reporting as an athlete. So, so what I yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry. So why should so why shouldn't she answer the questions about the things that she's doing? But when she was at the U.S. Open and she was wearing the, like, I can't breathe, you know, mm-hmm. she was answering those questions. Yeah. I think what she had more of an issue with is, a like, perfect example. Like, after um, after the Suns lose in the finals, you're going to ask Chris Paul, how do you feel about this right now? He wasn't fucking with that at all. Exactly. 
And then I don't not to get too far into basketball, but then like the night or the you know the game before the last game, Devin Booker and Chris Paul are sitting next to each other. It's like Devin, how do you feel about the fact that Chris Paul didn't do what he was supposed to do tonight, or some version of that? And they were all like, "What?" Yeah, you right. gotta hit the Bryce Harbor clown question, bro. That's a clown that's question, question, bro. <laughs> that's ridiculous. And this is what people are supposed to sit and talk about after. Like these type of questions, it's one thing to be like, "Hey, you were a little off," but what kind of that is messy. That's not even journalism. Uh, that's messy. It's 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 it, it, it's certainly not a a fun conversation to have. You're part of the team that busted their ass, had the best record in the league, got to the finals, and lost. Second best. Utah had the best record. They were like a game behind, though. They were right there. They, uh, and 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 it's it's a highly emotional time. And obviously, no one is going to have a rational ability to make even asking the celebrating team a question while you everyone's know? drunk and they're drunk already. You know, it's it's an impossibility. So, so the question is, I don't think that the post game interviews are bad. I don't think post match interviews are bad. I think those questions are important because, to me, as an athlete, as a coach, is is when you fail, when you're not successful, it shows your character, right? It says you know that there's more to be done. You know, there's one place you can fail in life and that's in the gym, right? So, so, so if, if, if you got millions of people watching these games, you got millions of children watching these games, how you respond to these questions are going to impact how their lives are going to be shaped, right? And, and so, so that matters. It matters. I agree to an extent, but you, let's, can we agree that there are some questions that are just literally about journalism and then there are questions just to create drama? Sure. sure. You can make it. Well, you can make the argument that. Go the ahead. question I just said about Chris Paul and Devin Booker as they were sitting there, the looks on their faces told you that was a legit message. It was a messy question, but was it a legitimate question? Devin, how do you feel about the fact that Chris Paul only dropped 16 points last game when he's been dropping 29 the entire series? What do you think happened? While he's sitting next to you. While he's sitting there? Yeah. The I think he's trash. Would that be a good answer? Hey, that <laughs> hey, Chris yeah, I mean, why don't you ask him if he's sitting that, that there? Would be a he that. Him. So, so that so, but but he asked him, "How do you feel about it?" Not how did he play? Not what his performance was. It was how do you feel? Chris Paul can't answer how he feels. Yeah, that gets messy though. This, I mean, I I, this, this is a reason why. This is a reason why you question. have media why you have media training, right? Because right. these types of questions aren't legitimate, but are up. still within the purview and, of fair and foul, I guess. And but again, guardrails on those questions. No we're, get, we're getting into, you know, journalism and, you know, journalism as a business and what creates clicks and likes and stuff like that. So like, I we're probably a little bit further yeah. away from where we were. But let's but, see, can I ask one question? But, have they ever done that with uh, Brady and Gronk? Yes. When? Yeah. Have, when they when when they lost to the when they lost to the Giants the second time. And they said, "Why Brady, can't? How do you feel that Gronk or vice versa? How do you feel that Tom Brady threw an interception in the last minute of the game? Okay, then I'll let it go. I'd, I'd have to. i I'm gonna go to the videotape on that. Yeah. I certainly don't remember that. But like, what happened? Why'd you lose? Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I just don't remember. There, there's certain reverence that certain. Yeah, I feel like journalists know better than to ask the white man yeah. like Tom Brady a silly question like that. Hey, you knew where I was going with that, Sean. <laughs> you knew where I was going. <laughs> we have to see. We'll get back to that though. But yeah. So anyway, um, I just felt it was interesting. AJ, we, I sent you guys are. There's a long list of Megan Kelly's greatest hits. Yeah. I think my favorite one. <laughs> oh, my favorite one, Michelle Obama as Barack's baby's mother. That was great. Like that is so <laughs> respectful. Like I don't yeah. even I can't even okay. Like she is yeah. not she is on my to be ignored list. There are certain Yeah, and I think Autumn, I think that's why this conversation probably diverged into something else. <laughs> like, I don't acknowledge her existence. She has no value as far as I'm concerned. So like it did. She had some great yeah, things. Like, to all say, right, but... Kelly doing what she does. <laughs> But no, it's stay related though because we talked about journalism, right? Yeah. That, that's what she holds as we stay that lane. What's legit and what's not? The, the 
to the people. He's not a journalist. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. Like, are we just calling anybody with a press pass a journalist? <laughs> yes. That's what, I mean, that seems like that's what journalism has turned into. I mean, it's just like getting the most salacious thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you won the championship. You're gonna have sex tonight? What? Like, <laughs> these are the kind of questions that we're borderline getting at this point. And it's like, I don't really want to know this. Like, for sure, for sure.